Christmas Day is only a little more than two weeks away. How are you doing with your preparations? Have you tried to get to a mall at all? All the traffic? Maybe you have to try a different way? It's round and about, but you get there anyway, don't you? Once you're there, is the item you're looking for still there or is everything gone already? After that, you go to the grocery store. It's packed, carts are all gone. When you get to the checkout line, someone with a cart full of groceries is in the seven or less item lane. So you finally arrive home, gonna go wrap the gifts, and there's no scotch tape. Doesn't it seem like every time you have mapped out your route, you've got your plans made, there's a sudden curve in the road or everything seems uphill. This puts me in mind of the first Christmas I spent with my wife. We were married in the summer of 81, And that first December Christmas, I wanted to make sure it was perfect. So we started with the tree, the perfect tree. We went out the Saturday after Thanksgiving. We drove from lot to lot looking for that perfect tree. Somewhere after the fourth lot, trudging through the snow that was up to our knees, we found that tree. We cut it down, dragged it back to the shed where the man was taking the money realized I didn't have enough, and I turned to my wife and said, I need more money for the tree. She looked at me. I don't have any money. I don't carry a purse walking around in the woods. (laughs) It would have been a thought. So we left the tree there and headed for home. It was getting dark. We didn't have time to go to any more lots. The following Wednesday, I was off from work, so I went out by myself to look for that tree. It was a very warm, sunny day. I drove to a place that I had seen advertised in the newspaper and again trudged through the snow to find that perfect tree. After much searching, following those marked trails where I was to walk, I found the tree, cut it down, and started dragging it back to the shed where I could pay for it and head home. As I walked through the woods, the tree seemed to get a little heavy and I saw a clearing off in the distance, so I headed that way and started cutting across that clearing. Well, the woman who was at the shed came out and started waving to me. And I thought she was waving me on, so I kept moving towards her. I couldn't hear what she was saying. Well, as I got closer, I finally heard what she was saying. Get off the pond, it's thawing. (laughs) I ran to the edge as fast as I could with that tree in tow. Got back to the shed, paid for it, And the woman apologized, said she had thought she marked off the pond, and I said, well, it all worked out anyway. Got the tree into the car and drove home. We were living in an upstairs flat on the north side. The ceilings were nine or ten feet high, and even when I went to stand that tree up, it was still too tall. I had to cut a couple of feet off the bottom. To this day, my wife wonders how I ever got that tree into the car. Anyways, We started decorating the tree, ran out of ornaments, had to make our own ornaments. So you see, that perfect Christmas took a little bit of time and ways, but we persevered. However, something we were missing when all of this was happening, our preparation for the coming of Jesus, who Advent is all about. So where are you in your preparations for Jesus? Advent means a coming, an arrival, or the beginning. We are in that time now. We're at the beginning of a new liturgical year. We'll soon be at the beginning of a new calendar year. All of the exchanging of gifts and the food and all the gathering of family, all wonderful things. The search for the perfect tree and preparing to have the perfect day are wonderful also. It shows the caring and the nurturing characteristics of a person. Jesus came and he cared and he nurtured people, so what could be more Christ-like? But we can't miss the point. The point is that we're to get ourselves ready, not for others, even though that's a great outcome. We should be preparing for the arrival of Jesus. If what the Mayans predicted is true, December 21st is definitely going to be the end of preparations. That's it. So, if it was, would you be ready to meet Jesus? Or 
Are you still thinking you have time to say more prayers, donate time to charity or your money to a good cause? Would you want to change anything about yourself if you knew that that was it? We may take our time on earth for granted, thinking we have enough time for all we want to do, and we don't know when Jesus is coming again. We may not even realize what we should be doing. Do we miss the obvious, that which is right in front of us? Yesterday was the 32nd anniversary of John Lennon's death. I remember his song, Beautiful Boy, and a line from that song. Life is what happens to you when you are busy making other plans. I think this sums up what happens to many of us during Advent. I know that I was so focused on getting that perfect tree the first Christmas and getting that tree back to the car, I nearly drowned in my own enthusiasm or that pond to be literal. I look back now and realize I missed what was going on around me while I was making the plans to celebrate that first Christmas. We may all lose our focus on what matters. Jesus, while making our plans for the perfect Christmas. But occasionally we are reminded of the spirit that we should have throughout the year when we look past ourselves and see what plays out right in front of us. You, have may, you may have seen the article in the, on the internet this past week about a New York City police officer, Officer DePrimo. He came upon a man, a homeless man, who was barefoot. He went out and he bought socks and shoes for the man with his own money. It was all captured on a cell phone by a tourist. Officer DePrimo saw the obvious, and better yet, he acted upon it. The Gospel today says, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The winding road shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth. God is telling us that he's concerned about our moral lives. He wants to make the path easy for us, straight and without the suffering his own son had to endure because he wants all flesh to see the salvation of God. He wants our crooked lives to be straight and our rough spots smoothed over. Think about the past week. Did you tell someone you were too busy to do something or too busy to even listen to them? We all have our schedules made with not even a moment to spare. When we face an obstacle, we go around. We hurriedly change direction without even thinking about what we leave in our wake. All these things that pass us is what's happening in life. These mounds we go around could be opportunities God puts there to slow us down so we can take that right road to salvation. The advent of our lives is here, and we cannot allow ourselves to be headed down the wrong road. So when are we going to prepare for Jesus? How are we going to prepare for Jesus? When? The time is now. How? We can put Jesus first in our thoughts with a daily morning prayer or attending daily Mass. We can keep him in our thoughts throughout the day, by taking a moment or two to stop and listen to what he's telling us and then act on what he says. We can even do it in just a few minutes from now when we make our petitions to God and we have those seven seconds to add our own intentions in the silence of our hearts. Pray for yourselves. Pray that you will take the time and make the necessary room for Jesus. See those roads smoothed over and the paths made straight. We need to go ahead with those plans for celebrating Christmas. But we remember that we are also at the same time preparing for the coming of Jesus. We are preparing for our salvation. The word of the gospel says, all flesh shall see the salvation of God. We need to take whatever steps necessary to get closer to Jesus. Advent is the time to do that. It's a time of beginnings. It's the coming of Jesus and it's happening now. It's not separate from our daily lives, but in concert with our daily lives. Life is what happens to you when you are busy making other plans.